Do you think a bench warmer can steal the spotlight? Think again, because sometimes that overlooked substitute might just be the next big sensation waiting to erupt. When Liverpool penned Gravenberg's signature in 2023 summer transfer window, opinions were split in half, many dubbed it as a panic buy, scoffing at the idea of a buy and bench warmer, adding any flair to the mighty Reds. Others envisaged him as a saviour, perfectly slotting into Liverpool's coverted number 6 position. But what if we told you that most football fans missed the mark? and had no idea what Jurgen Klopp was cooking. Gravenberg, once hailed as midfield's next prodigy, was overshadowed in Germany, but now is being moulded into a Premier League midfield titan. This is where the narrative thickens. How is Klopp masterfully orchestrating Gravenberg's rise? And why isn't he the number six everyone anticipated? Strap in as we unravel this tale. But first, a deep dive into Ryan Gravenberg's profile as a player. Imagine being 16, stepping onto the Ajax field and instantly toppling a record set by the legendary Clarence seed off. That's Ryan Gravenberg for you. Under Eric Ten Hag's guidance in 2018, this young dynamo not only made a name for himself, but also collected three Dutch titles and two Dutch cups. And if that wasn't impressive enough, by 18, he was dominating the Netherlands jersey, showcasing his talent on the global stage. It's hardly a surprise that he was hailed as football's next big thing. How is he as a player? Well, we've got you. Gravenberg is a right-footed player who likes to operate in the middle of the park, but he isn't your average central midfielder. What makes him so unique is his versatility. Whether he's anchoring as a single pivot, partnering in a dynamic double pivot, or charging forward as an attacking force in the number 8 or number 10 role, he's got it all. He can maintain possession in the tightest of spaces, weaving quick combinations, and expertly sidestepping pressure. And it's not just keeping the ball, it's how he delivers it. See, there is a very underrated trait in players, which is the weight and placement of a simple pass. Gravenberg often perfectly weighs his passes and precisely aims them to his teammates' strong his foot. This way, then he can quickly turn away from the opponents. When he ventures higher up the pitch, he threads needles, finding those delicate spaces between defenders, sliding passes that slice through lines, or lofting them just right of his teammates to receive the inside of the box. Ryan loves to play front foot passes, and guess what? That's what Jurgen Klopp admires. But his creativity isn't limited to his passing range and his vision. He masterfully transitions into threatening zones, slicing through tight defenses with ease, using his ability to smoothly change direction by dropping his shoulders. He has the unique skill of waiting, baiting, and then swiftly turning, leaving opponents chasing their shadows. Such a trait can help break down low blocks, as Ryan can act as an additional offensive player to cause numerical superiority. Now this sums up his quality when he's a player higher up the pitch. But what about when he's deployed deeper? Well, that's where Ryan spent majority of his career so far. At Bayern, Ryan struggled for minutes under Julian Nagelsmann, but when Thomas Tuchel took over, he was deployed in a double pivot, perfectly complementing either either Kimmich or Goretzka in a 4-2-3-1 formation. This twist gave Bayern's fullbacks the license to charge forward, with Kimmich often dropping into the back line. This was when Gravenberg thrived, finding pockets of space to drive and weave connections, whether with darting fullbacks or menacing forward line. Ryan made just 34 appearances, where he mainly came off with the bench for Bayern, playing a total of 946 minutes. So let's get back to the time at Ajax, when he was played as a regular starter. Ryan also operated in the deeper areas during his time in the Netherlands. However, he was used more as a single pivot. He emerged as the midfield anchor, the bridge linking defence to attack. He dropped back into defence to receive while facing forward, only to surge forward into the midfield within 10. Often, he'd drift to Ajax's left, where his chemistry with players like Tadic was electric. And when the situation demanded, he'd hold the fort certainly, playing swift, intricate passes to control the tempo and dictate the play. He was also deployed as a number 8 in Ajax's 4-3-3, especially after the arrival of central defensive midfielder Edison Alvarez. With Tadic cutting inside, Gravenberg smoothly combined with him in the left inside channel, constantly looking to destabilise the opponent's right side. This allowed Taglificio to make his overlapping runs. But what about his outer possession style? Well, Gravenberg masters the technique of pressing from the inside out, directing play away from the heart of midfield. He adopts an aggressive yet calculated approach that forces opponents to delay their attacks and drift into less dangerous areas. At just 21, Gravenberg Gravenberg is already turning heads, looking like the complete package. With his expansive skill set, it's no brainer he was destined to be Liverpool's new holding midfielder, right? With Endo not quite the first team fit, McAllister shining brighter as a box to box dynamo, and to Bosline naming that RCM spot, it seemed the pathway was clear. But hold on to your seats because this is where it gets spicy. Klopp, the mastermind, already had plans to get the best out of Gravenberg, and trust us, the German is so far doing so. After all, he done wonders with James Milner, Jordan Henderson, and Alan. 
Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. So bringing the best out of one of football's brightest prospects is not a challenging task for Klopp. But remember our glowing review of Gravenberg's profile? Well, let's add a pinch of reality. He might be vulnerable in transitional moments when facing direct duels or being caught on the back foot. His 1v1 defending in transition is not the best and often results in him losing his man or committing unnecessary fouls. Now, that's a risky business for a number six, especially in the Premier League's relentless pace. But here's the genius of Klopp. He didn't ship Gravenberg to Anfield to be that vulnerable pivot. Instead, he's crafting stage where Gravenberg's prowess shines as his flawless fade. Intrigued by Klopp's master plan, buckle up and let's dive right in. Here's something to ponder. When young talents switch clubs, they're often eased into the first team fray, right? But Klopp, he's got a different playbook. The German has adopted a new approach in pairing up players for the same role, ensuring freshness and undying faith in his squad. And with that, Gravenberg was left waiting in the wings. He was thrust into the spotlight against Lask in the Europa League, mere days post his Anfield arrival. Remember when we mentioned earlier that Gravenberg thrives on the left-hand side when deployed higher up the pitch? It turns out that Klopp took no. Now it's a dynamic duo. Gravenberg and Harvey Elliott taking turns at the LCM spot, with Zabozlai commanding the right and McAllister anchoring the pivot. The midfield machinery is humming to Klopp's tune. Roll the clock back and you'll see Gravenberg swiftly carving out a spot in the Liverpool Europa League lineup. With two games against Union saint gilles and Toulouse, he's clocked up 149 minutes and netted twice. The same goes for the league. After being the bench warmer for the initial four matches, Klopp handed him his jersey for the iconic Merseyside derby and that followed up against Nottingham Forest. Klopp's pairs tactic for easing in Gravenberg wasn't just a strategy, it was a confidence booster and an avenue for the Dutch prodigy to floor his prowess. With McAllister deployed as the single pivot, always ready to counter any opponent's move, Gravenberg's transitional hiccups are now limited. So when Gravenberg's starting to play regularly in his favourite position, let's see how he's performed so far. For the stat heads among you, brace yourself. Ryan's been dishing out an impressive average of 38.3 passes every 90 minutes, clocking an 82% accuracy. His attacking flair, it is crystal clear with around five key passes into the penalty area every single game. And when it comes to shooting, he's nailing it with staggering 80% accuracy. Across nine matches in the league and Europa League, he's made 14 progressive carries and fired off 35 forward passes. That's more than Moises Caicedo and Sofyan Amrabat despite playing fewer minutes. It's only a matter of time until the world starts to recognize how brilliant Gravenberg actually is. Playing as an LCM will allow him to combine with Luis Diaz, giving Robertson or Simicas more space on the wing to bomb into. This way, Liverpool will have an extremely balanced midfield that is equally dangerous on both sides. Klopp already singing praise for Gravenberg's magic on the ball, whether in tight or larger spaces, his ball progression, those laser precise passes and the knack for shooting. But here's the twist, the German believes there's more work to be done defensively. To wear that Liverpool shirt week in and week out, Ryan must amp up his defensive game. And guess what? Klopp's got his back. He's vowed to mould Gravenberg refining those defensive edges. After all, Gravenberg is still just 21 years old, so you can imagine how much potential he has. Just picture this, Gravenberg, a midfield maestro with a killer vision, morphing into a transitional titan who's everywhere, intercepting and turning defences into attack. Now that's a midfielder every team would dream of. It's true that Jurgen Klopp reacted too late to anticipate the decline of the midfield, but as they say, better late than never. Jurgen proved once again his adaptability and genius in reshaping his team. With the new artillery in the heart of the pitch, Liverpool is regaining that aura of invincibility. Gravenberg in particular is a testament to Klopp's vision and his knack of evolving players. As the season unfolds, the Anfield faithful have every reason to be optimistic. The Reds midfield transformation might just be a turning point, setting them onto a path to reclaim their spot at the top of English football. But what do you guys think? Is this revamped Liverpool midfield the key to their resurgence? Do you believe Gravenberg will continue to shine under Klopp's guidance? Well, let us know down there in the comment section below. And hey, if you enjoyed this deep dive and analysis, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more insightful football content. Thank you, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.